Comcast Center for today's Terrapin Classic game. I love uh, playing in tournaments, you know, I think it definitely prepares you uh, for the ACC tournament, you know, your conference tournament when you got to play, you know, back-to-back -back days, you know, two games, three games in a row. Obviously, the NCAA tournament, uh, you know, you, you play, you know, two games over the course of, of you know, four days. So um, just, you know, getting your team, you know, it's a different mentality of how you have to prepare and your scouting reports. So. Uh, just a lot of different elements to, to prepare us for. Uh, it's just great to, you know, after having a couple weeks off and just to get back and, and you know, get the rest off. And I think we came out and we played hard and um, it, it, it didn't look like we, we've been resting. Big fat heads. They're like this big, and they're of the players, and they all look beautiful. And my sister's, her hair's down, so I didn't actually recognize her at first. I couldn't pick her out of the lineup, but it's not very hard to spot her once you find her. But I get all excited when I see her. I think they're gorgeous. They're the best pictures I've seen. It shows the support for the school, and of course, I like Hades. <laughs> my daughter? Yeah, looks like her. <laughs> Oh, I just, they, they're into the game. They're cheering and they're being happy, and which is good for the girls. It shows their support. I mean, I like mine, but I like locating it. I think that's the best part in the game is being able to find your own and then being able to find each, like other, other teammates. And then I'll, I normally point them out to other teammates when I see theirs. I'm like, there go your fat head, there go your head. So it's, it's just fun for us. It's just, it, it, I just like it. It's funny. She had a picture. I took, when I first had mine, I found mine last year because I had ours in the Elite Eight game. And, uh, when we played Texas A&M, and I found it last year. I took a picture and put it on Instagram. So I think it, I, if I could, I would walk around with it on my, right in front of my face and just play around with it. Um, I love them because like, we get to see everybody. And um, the fan, I think the fans really get into it, and they all, they're always holding them up and celebrating with them. So I think it's a great thing. I think I look good. I think, it, I think it's a good picture of me. Of the fat head signs? I want to say that picture is probably from my sophomore year. I don't know. When I look in the stands, I see my big old head in the stands just floating around. So I kind of look. I kind of think of that's being funny. I really like seeing the players. You know, when I see those different elements, when I go back and watch a game, a uh, televised game, and I can see those in the stands, I think it's a pretty cool element. Usually, when you get the little kids and they dance, they should win the Buffalo Wild Wings gift card because that's really cute. Um, Sequoia's is probably the best picture. She's adorable. And I think Lexi could be a model. So you put all those girls together. We have a really attractive team. <laughs> what are your plans after high school? Um, I'm going to play basketball on a scholarship at the University of Maryland. My name is Shatori Walker Kimbrough. I'm a shooting guard, wing player, slasher from the University of Maryland. And I'm from Alacoba, Pennsylvania. Well, when she came to us in junior high school, and uh, she's kind of just a kid that's faster with the ball. Uh, than with other times and you know she's what makes her special is she's very unselfish a kid that is happy that her teammates score uh, not so much that she has to score she wants to see everyone enjoy being part of that team and enjoy the experience along with her as we progressed and as she grew uh, you know not only personally but also athletically uh, that transferred over to the high school team and became infectious for the other kids on the team. The one thing I do tell people like this, my first thing is that it's a home away from home. Like they made me feel like I was a part of the team. Not even wasn't even like I. I just like I just felt I just felt welcome. I just felt like it was genuine. When I would play in high school, coaches would come. I would see like assistant here, assistant here. But the, the thing that stood out was like was Coach Freeze was coming. I mean, Coach Agnes and Coach Langley would come too. But like Coach Freeze was coming. Like it was Brenda Freeze at my high school games, not just. Like assistants, and I appreciated the fact that coaches were coming to see me play. But the fact that they, like Maryland's head coach, was coming to see me play just showed a little bit, like okay, maybe they do really want me. <laughs> Shatori, we were really fortunate. She came to our league camp, and 
you know, was the best player in our camp and, and was really only here for one of the two days uh, of our elite camp. And, um, you know, obviously extremely talented, you know, gifted uh, beyond, uh, you know, when you talk about her athleticism, her speed, you know, her ability to, to score, to slash, to shoot the three, to defend uh, is really exciting. And, um, you know, Shatori's, a, you know, a player that hasn't, spent you know just the time playing basketball you know she uh, also you know played volleyball ran you know did track and um, excelled in every sport that she played uh, when i wanted to play three sports people told me it would basically be like i won't be able to do it because like basketball like they're they all kind of combine into each other when, like when volleyball playoffs started basketball like conditioning was starting and so like in school would start at seven I would go till three. Volleyball practice started at three. It went from three to five. Basketball started from at six. So I would stay that hour and go to basketball from six to eight. So I'll go, I wouldn't leave school until like nine o'clock at night from like that day. And that was like at least three days a week. Yeah, I feel like it's easy to play three sports, but it's, I don't think it's easy to be like, like I wanted to be like just great at all of them. And that, and that kind of like, it was kind of tough at some times because it was kind of like, I was never ever taking a break, but I but I hate being bored, so it wasn't really that hard for me because I, I like to be active. Like I knew I was gonna play basketball in college, but like volleyball, like I would stay after practice. Like I wanted to be the best volleyball player there was, even though I knew I was not gonna play. And like my volleyball coach was kind of mad because like he would say like, "Why well, don't want you to get hurt playing pickup at basketball?" And we need you. I mean, it's like championship games about to come up, playoffs about to get it's about to get like crucial. And so, but I would, I mean, I, I was, I love basketball, so I was going to miss practice. <laughs> each sport lends to each other in certain ways, you know, jumping with, in volleyball helps with basketball skills as well as in track, you know, she was a long jump person and, and a triple jump. So those, all three sports kind of played an integral part in her development as an athlete to this stage. You set a record today beating it by almost six inches. The last record was 13 feet one, uh, 13 feet one inch and you had a jump of 19.2. Oh, I was a long jumper, triple jumper. I, I watched the people run. <laughs> the, people, like the coaches would say, well, you were a track star. I was like, no. I watched people run. I was not a runner. <laughs> I like probably track the most. Well, not I wouldn't say I like track the most. I just like getting the medals. Like I was very, like I, if I knew we were getting a medal, oh, was I gonna try and kill someone to get that medal? <laughs> I just like to win. Uh, she's a perfectionist in everything she does. Uh, she's a kid that uh, whether you're playing uh, checkers or whatever it is, she doesn't want to lose. I'm not, I am not a good loser. And because I didn't have any siblings, me and my mom would play my board games together. I would just, you know, flip the board over. Throw my, throw my Game Boy, <laughs> snap my Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, she stopped playing games with me. She was like, if you're gonna do that, you're just, I'm just not even gonna bother. There's no point. <laughs> yeah, my mom raised me by herself. Uh, it was just her and me in the household. And she is not an athlete. <laughs> She's not, like, I would have her rebound for me. And she, like, honestly, I would just be like, okay, I'll just rebound by myself. Cause she would just roll the ball to me. I'm like, can I get a good pass? Like. <laughs> She, and like, I mean, she has done, like people have no idea what that lady has gone through. Cause she would get off of work at five. And when I was in basketball practice, she would, she would come to pick me up. Like in, in between that hour, that five and six hour, she would come and rebound for me. And then she would go out in the car and sleep cause she wouldn't leave. So she would sleep in the car while like, I'm where I'm at. And of course I stayed past pickup to get some more shots up. So she'd be out in the parking lot for like three, four hours sleeping, waiting for me to come out. She loved me. <laughs> she would do, she would go above and beyond for me, by far. School was number one, always. Like, she wasn't, like if she couldn't help me, she would call all over the county looking for me if I needed a tutor. Like it was number one. I'll start with this, my mom was very, she gets sick. Like I don't know, not right now, she's not, but like she wouldn't be able to watch my games. Like she would watch in the hallway, cause she would get like so sick. Like. If I got fouled or students or parents would be screaming like overrated, just all kinds of stuff at me. And she would go in the hallway because she couldn't like, she couldn't hear that. Now she, she's able to watch me. And I mean, I just appreciate everything that she's done. People thought I was overrated, she, but she was always like right there. Like had that hand in my back, like pushing me on. 
even if I wanted to stop in my tracks, she was always that motivator. I just want you to get out of here. You're going to make a name for yourself. Like, I just want, I mean, you got it. Like, she, she was, like, when I didn't believe in myself, no one believed in me. She was always right there. The text my mom sent me right before the ball dropped. Well, actually, it wasn't even right before the ball dropped. It was like a, a quarter after 11, so I'm guessing she didn't see the ball drop. <laughs> I am getting sleepy, but I wanted to wish my beautiful, talented, smart daughter a happy new year. I am so excited to see where God is going to take you in 2014. I love you. I am so proud of you. Keep working hard. An NCAA championship is right around the corner. Love you, Mom. All right. For some of you, this is your first ACC conference game at Carolina. For all of us, it's our last. It's our last conference game down here at Carolina. Leave your mark. Leave your mark. And you got to understand, all right? Christy Tolliver used to tell me, I love coming down here because this is where Michael played, where MJ played. Before, Coach was talking about how, like, when Christy Tolliver used to play, and she, like, her motivation was, like, when she would come down, she would always think that, like, she was playing the same place as Michael Jordan. And I, and I thought that. It was incredible. Um, I've been waiting and waiting to meet her. Everyone else other than uh, the other freshmen have met her before, and... I look up to her a lot. I like I've literally idolized her. She's my favorite female basketball player. So when she walked into practice, I almost had a heart attack. But I mean, I, I got to pick her brain and we talked for about a, an hour or so and it was awesome. I asked her, I was like, Do you get did you ever get nervous for your like ACC game? She was like, No, she's like, especially not North Carolina. She's like, one, it's a shooter's gym. And then two, she's like, and I just I don't think about it as being where North Carolina plays. I think of it where Michael Jordan plays. And I was like, yeah, you're right, because Michael Jordan did play on that court. So that, that was incredible also to play on the same court that Michael Jordan played on. She got a great thrill off of being on that court. Whatever that might be, you're all going to have your own motivation, whatever that might be. You go out and you play your first, last, ACC game here at Carolina and you leave your mark. I was a little nervous at the beginning, you know, this is our first ACC game. Let's go, go get uh, Brene. But I mean, as the game went on, I mean, it all kind of melted away. Uh, freshmen uh, didn't play like freshmen, they, play, they played like big time players like they are. And um, you know, you know, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, of the talented freshmen here at Carolina, uh, which they are. But um, you know, we have just a talented freshman. Thought, uh, you know, Lexi and and Shatori in the first half played with a lot of confidence. Three was um, from half to half w w was big, came up big for us inside. It was like the the basket was an ocean. I mean, it was great, and to, to start off a game like that is anything a team would want. And I mean, we got rolling really early, so that was good. Um, then you know, in the second half, Lexi and Shatori struggled a little bit. Our freshmen are playing hey, like freshmen. Hey, Renee, go get uh, Lexi. Hey, both of you, both of you. Look at me. We had like two mini mental breakdowns, but I mean, Coach B is awesome. She knew to take us out. She she gave us hugs. Look at me. Wait, how much time is on the clock? Nine minutes. So we don't need, and, and we have the lead, all right? We need to, when, when you guys gather yourself, and then you go back in, and you guys got to play with the poise and confidence that you played with in the first half. And she's like, I'm going to sit y'all down so you can get your minds right, get it together, and then I'm going to put you guys right back in. Um, but kept their defense and kept playing. Get, go get the ball. I want you shooting the free throw. You know, they were big. You know, for their first road trip to be able to come in here to Carolina and play the way they did um, says a lot in terms of our future. And then, you know, our vets, you know, were able to, to help them out. Yes, Let's go! Run, run, run. Let's go, Katie! Uh, so one year ago on this court. I was guarding Tierra Ruffin Pratt, and she spun, which I knew she was gonna do to shoot, but I didn't know she was gonna leave with her elbow, and I didn't know it was gonna come in contact with my nose, which would eventually break during that play, so lots of blood, lots of blood. Katie, okay, last time you were here, you left, you know, you had to wear a mask, you had a broken nose. You know, how much do you think about that? I was reminded all week about my nose, and <laughs> up to the game, uh, right before, so it was always great. Um, <laughs> But I mean, it's a physical game and whatever happens, happens. So one year later, which is our present day, uh, I had a rough first half, wasn't 
shooting well, wasn't as confident in my shot. Come on, Katie. Katie's middle. got about right one up. more possession for me. It's the hardest thing, you know, dynamic in coaching, I think. She's off. She's off. Is to find out kind of in that moment in an intense game, intense environment where players are at in their head. And um, sometimes you can lose your confidence within a four minute segment, you know, just like that. And then you can get it back. But credit Katie, I mean, what, what big shots for her to be able to come back in the second half to be able to open up this game. Yes, Katie! Yes! Come on, Black! Come on, Black! She was on fire. I mean, when Katie's on, she's on. So, I mean, we just kept getting her the ball. Um, and she was, she was a huge part of that run that we uh, had in the second half. It feels great. Um, it feels like I can make any shot I took, and it helps me know that I'm I'm being a part of the team and I'm really contributing, helping them out. Alyssa is Alyssa. I mean, she makes play after play after play. Um, and wants to make them, and you know, you know, it was a game, um, you know, late in the second half when they made their run. That it was AT that really, you know, made the statement that we, we weren't going to be denied. Um, she's just a fierce competitor, and uh, there's nothing better for our seniors to be able to, you know, give them this win the last time they play at Carolina. My favorite feeling is when you're on a court and they're booing, and, and they're booing you. That's my most favorite feeling when they're on a court and they're booing you. I, I love to kind of instill in our players, you know, the thrill of competition. You know, I love the moments when you're in an arena and they're booing against you. I mean, there's not a bigger rush for me. Um, and, and I want our players to embrace it. I love it. You gotta love it. And, and to love that moment because now you're in control. Like you've got this crowd that, that is really angry because you're playing so well. It was fun. Um, we went to surprise Coach B by hiding in the, the showers, but there was a cockroach which ruined everything. Um, but some people hid in the lockers. So, I mean, we just decided to fool Coach B because she was taking a long time. We were just chilling, and she's like, yeah, that's how you, that's how you celebrate a win. Like, I guess she thought that we were going to be like, oh, it's whatever, it's just a win. But then they popped out, and we went crazy. Hey, now you all can say that you won on the same floor as Michael Jordan played on. Yes, we sure did. Great, great job. That starts with, with, with what we've done in practice to be able to take it to here. Very proud of you. We are at Northwestern High School, um, right down the street from College Park, and I'm here doing a field experience. I'm in the classroom observing some teachers, um, science teachers, and helping kids out in the classroom um, with their worksheets and their work as part of a field experience for my class EDCI 411. Can you help? His hands. No, yeah, not the hands, only the part that A is talking about. Okay. Yep. So I come here twice a week on Thursdays and Fridays and um, do what I can to get some experience on my road to becoming a real teacher. Okay. Is there a specific one? is great. <laughs> um, what can I say? She works really well with the students. She's, um, because of her personality, she's very outgoing. She fits well into my classroom because I'm outgoing too and so is my co-teacher over there. Tell my color in this one. You got it? You gonna tell them what to do? This is uh, biology, so it's a mixture of regular ed and special ed students. Food solvent, actually. Food. <laughs> Food solvent. Food solvent. I get to see what it's what what it's really like here <laughs> in the trenches, if you will, with the teachers and um, here at a public school, public high school. Um, 
little different than my experience in high school, so um, it's very cool to see where I could possibly be in a year um, and more. Let's see what the paragraph says. For them to get the hands-on experience, um, it's important on their end, but on our end, the support is necessary because our classes are very large and um, we don't have the support that we need today in today's classroom, especially when we're doing individual activities with technology or with labs. You see how it says C right there, and like it's only pointing to that part? You just want to get to that part right there. I thought it was pointing to the liquid. I think it's pointing to the end of the thermometer, I think. Yeah, so you just want to get, yeah, just like that. I think more indirectly, the, the way I've had to deal with academics with that basketball, that indirect way has been more, um, definitely an influence, like the way that I will have to prepare for class or um, make lesson plans and stuff like that. I feel like time won't ever be an issue because I know how to manage it and how to do that. But I think um, what you'll see in this class too is that there are a lot of um, teaching assistants and that the teamwork type aspect of that is um, important because you're not always going to just have your one one class and um, like she was saying the class sizes can be, especially at a school like this, can be 25, 30 and so um, the teamwork aspect of teaching um, I don't think many people realize but I, I'm seeing that I'm going to have to use more and more from this experience and there's three or four, two interns in the class, four teaching assistants, one, you know, it, it's, it's bigger and bigger and so um, teaching is really a team sport. Oh, are you in the yeah. lab too? Yeah, I'm in both. Can you tell us about it? <laughs> no, it's actually it's really cool. I think like. to reach our students, it's important to have people like Sequoia around because when the students see that, um, you know, that there's a, a big deal University of Maryland basketball players here, they all want to know about her. And then because they care and um, know she's important, they want to listen to her and what she has to say. Any questions?